I am here with the Honorable Ian Douglas, the Parliamentary Representative for the Portsmouth Constituency. And he came here yeah, and he spoke with the bus driver, so now we're going to speak with him to hear what his views are. Hi, Mr. Douglas. Uh, hi, I am. How are you? Good morning, not too bad, and you? So we see a protest action in the Portsmouth Constituency by the bus drivers. What are your views? Well, I mean, you know, different groups will protest at different times for different reasons. Uh, that's why we are here as politicians to listen to them, to listen to their concerns, uh, listen to their challenges, and go back to the drawing board and see how best we can we can um, reach some common ground. Do you think their protest is justified? Well, I mean, you have to look at it in context of the what has been offered by the government already. You have the the possibility of an access of a one percent. $15,000 loan at the aid bank that they can access um, for small businesses. You also have at the Dominica Social Security between four and $600 for uh, self-employed uh, uh, persons um, between, I believe it is April and June, that they can also access. Um, so it is a matter of education and educating them as to what is available, what are the requirements, and like the Prime Minister said, we are trying to make um, those facilities as easy as possible to access um, on behalf of not just the bus drivers but all of the self-employed um, small business persons who have suffered as a result of, of the COVID pandemic. What would you say to the bus drivers now? I would say to the bus drivers, I'm here, I'm here to listen. That's our duty, our responsibility as politicians, as representatives of the people. We're here to listen. That's why I came here in the first place, to meet with them, to hear their concerns. So we can take it back to the drawing board and we can discuss and see how it is within the tight fiscal parameters we can probably find some common ground. Some of them are saying that they do not have the required documents to go to the aid bank. What can you say to that? If you're running a business, you have to run a business properly. I mean, you, you, you should have at least your business registered. Every small business person knows that. And you should have at least some kind of basic profit and loss kind of statement, income and expense statement. At least for the last year, that's what the aid bank is asking for, so that the aid bank themselves can establish that you are a serious small business owner. And not just everybody, just because the facilities have been created, everybody just get up on Friday morning and, and decide that they are small business owner. I mean, look at the amount of assistance government has given in the past. Free of charge, eh? free money to small business owners. And some of them have not used the money for the purposes intended. So that's why now we want to bring some order, we want to bring some structure, we want to bring some discipline going forward to make sure that if you are a serious small business owner, you are a serious shop owner, you are a serious store guide, you are a serious store operator, you are a serious bus driver for the purposes of this present situation, that you have your business properly registered with the various uh, agencies like the Dominica Social Security. Take for example, a bus driver now who is in his 70s, late 60s, early 70s, and you're going to retire just now, you will not be capable of applying the trade as you would have done in the past when you were younger. If you're raised with Social Security, you are guaranteed that at, in the twilight years, you get a sort of pension support. To, to, to see you through your, your difficult years. Even the government themselves have come up with a 70 and over non-pension grant of $300 a month. So even persons who had not been formally part of the Social Security or the Provident Fund, as it was called, scheme, at the time, the government has created, in its own goodness, have created a facility to ensure that persons in their twilight years are cushioned and not um, um, fall into, into poverty. And these are some of the initiatives that the government through the years have implemented for those kinds of purposes. So this is a government that has always shown that we care about every single sector, every single person in the country. And this situation is no different. That is why we have created the various in um, 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 packages, if you want to call them, that I want to a better word, to, to help people to ride out the COVID pandemic. Do you have any final comments? I, I, I understand where the bus drivers are coming from. It's been a very difficult period. There's been literally no travel because everybody has been locked down. Some of them have their loans to pay. Some of them have $100,000, $120,000 loans on their buses. People are not going to Rojo as, as often because of the pandemic. With the whole social distancing issue, they cannot um, um, carry their full payloads. Um, so, I mean, I understand where they're, going, where they're coming from, you know what they what they're going through the challenges. 
and that's why I'm here to listen. And uh, we will we'll certainly take their concerns seriously and see um, what we can do to allay um, some of the pressure that they're under. Thanks for talking to Emonius. All the best.